We're back again with Nain Khan uh, in the second part of the reminder for today titled The Reality of Music. And inshallah, we're going to let our dear Sheikh Aqil Mahmoud Hafidullah to explain on this uh, important, serious subject. As the brother mentioned, we're going to be talking about the reality of music. But before we go into the reality of music and what music is and whether it's uh, permissible or not, and why isn't it permissible if it isn't, and uh, you know, some of the evidences and proofs and what are the harmful effects of music, uh, I wanted to start by talking about rulings in Islam. How do we know if something is allowed or if something isn't allowed in Islam? How do we know if something is allowed or not allowed? Okay, according to the Quran and the Sunnah. According to the Quran, meaning the speech of Allah, and according to the hadith of the Messenger of Allah. So, if Allah tells us that something isn't allowed in the Qur'an, then that makes it haram. If Allah tells us don't do something, then that means we shouldn't be doing it. And if we do do it, what happens? You're sinful. If Allah tells us in the Qur'an, you have to do something. What does it tell us to do in the Qur'an? What do we have to do? Pray. And if a person doesn't pray, then he's sinful. If you do something which Allah has told you not to do, then you're sinful as well. So, let's say someone says, <clears throat> I know Allah has told us we have to pray, but I think prayer is actually good for you. I think you don't have to pray. I think it's not good for your back, you know, when you go to study the It's not good to stand up every single day and bow and do ruku and do sajda and, you know, you don't have to pray five times a day. You can pray once. If you're busy with work or you're at school or you're, you know, busy with your friends and you're playing, you don't have to pray. That's what I think. Then does that make you okay? No, it doesn't make you okay because, why doesn't it make you okay? Because Allah has told us that we're supposed to pray. If Allah tells us, worship me and don't associate any partners with me, don't worship anything else. And we say, yeah, you know, Allah said that, but it's okay if we prostrate to a rock. Rocks are different. Does that make it okay? No. That doesn't make it okay. So the number one reason why something is allowed or something isn't allowed is because Allah has told us. Or because the Messenger of Allah has told us <coughs> that it's something we should do or something we shouldn't do. Okay? So if someone says to us that this is something which I like to do, but it's something which Allah has forbidden, what's more important? Things that we like, or what Allah has told us? Yeah? What Allah has told us. What Allah has told us. Because a person might like something that's wrong. For example, some people, it might be in their nature to like things which are bad. For example, some people, they might like to steal. Does that mean it's okay to steal? No, no because it's haram. Someone, he might have a very bad habit, a filthy habit of swearing all the time. <clears throat> but of course, that doesn't mean it's right, doesn't mean it's good. Because Allah has told us that something which is wrong. So the number one reason why something isn't allowed and why we shouldn't do something is because Allah has told us not to do it. Now why do we listen to Allah when Allah tells us something is bad? Or that we should do something? Why do we listen to Allah? Why don't we listen to people for example? Or our friends or our 
family members or other people. Why do we always listen to Allah? Firstly, more importantly, other than, you know, people, yeah? Because Allah is always right and He knows everything. Excellent, very good. Allah is always correct. If Allah tells us something is bad, then it's definitely bad. If Allah tells us you need to stay away from this, then that means we have to stay away from it. If the Prophet ﷺ tells us you need to do this, that's something we have to do because there's benefit for us because Allah, Allah knows what's good for us. Allah knows what's bad for us. If Allah tells us something, He's not going to tell us something or tell us to do something if it's something bad for us. If it's, if it's something that's going to hurt us and cause harm to us, then Allah won't allow us to do it. Even acts of worship. Did you know if you're fasting and you're sick and you, you become even worse, your health becomes even worse because you're fasting, Allah says, don't fast. It's haram for you to fast. Because you're becoming worse. Your health is getting worse. You're becoming sicker. If you become sicker because you're fasting, then it's haram for you to fast because your life is more important. So Allah will never ever tell us something if it's not for our own benefit to do or to stay away from. So, what does Allah tell us in the Quran when Allah talks about music. There's many ayat in the Quran which talk and discuss music and some of these ayat they're very clear and some of these ayat the companions like ones that we've mentioned already like Ibn Abbas he would explain these ayat to some of the people during his time who didn't understand what these ayat meant. <clears throat> One of these ayat is in Surah Al-Najm. Allah is talking to the disbelievers. And the disbelievers in Mecca, whenever the Qur'an would be revealed, they would start to sing out loud. Why would they start to shout and sing out loud? So people wouldn't yeah. hear the Qur'an. They would just have people listening to the singing and the shouting. So Allah says in the Quran, He says, أَفَمِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَعْجَبُونَ Do you start wondering and thinking about this recitation? وَتَضْحَكُونَ وَلَا تَبْكُونَ And you're laughing and you're not crying, you're making fun of this Quran. وَأَنْتُمْ سَامِدُونَ And you're wasting your time in amusement. سامدون. And the word سامدون some of the companions, they were asked, they said, what does Samidu mean? That all of you are Samidu. You're wasting your time doing other things. You're amusing yourself doing other things. And <coughs> they said, Ikrimah, one of the, the Tabi'in, he said that Ibn Abbas, he said, wasting your time in amusements, means singing. So Ibn Abbas, he said, this ayah is talking about those who sing. <coughs> when people who sing <coughs> are doing something opposite to what Allah tells us to do, which is to recite the Qur'an. And another ayah also, it tells us that Allah says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهْوَ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمِ that there are some people man yashtari, man yashtari lahu al-hadith, who buy and they purchase lahu al-hadith, idle talk or evil speech, evil talk. To misguide people from the path of Allah. And so Ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he was asked, he said, what is this lahu al-hadith, this idle and evil talk? What is he talking about? What does it mean? And Ibn Abbas, he said, wallahi, by Allah, this means music. This is talking about music. Because we're going to talk later, when you listen to music, you don't want to listen to Quran. Which means it takes you away from Allah, it takes you away from the Quran. So, he said this means music. 
Another companion or another scholar, he said that I swear, Wallahi alladhi la ilaha illahu, I swear by the one besides whom there is no God, this ayah, lahu al hadith, is talking about singing. So music on one hand and singing on the other. And Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said about this hadith, he said the meaning of this word, lahu al hadith, idol or evil talk, is music, singing, and things like this. And he also said, music and those who purchase singers, female singers, in those days, if they wanted to relax, people who weren't Muslim before Islam, they would waste their time drinking alcohol and they would buy, uh, hire women to come and they would sing for them. And so Allah says, there are people, man yashtari lahul hadith, they buy, evil talk. And this is the evil talk that's been that's being referred to. When you buy these hire these women to basically start to sing. And Imam al Hasan al Basri, another famous scholar, he said this verse was revealed in relation to singing and musical instruments. So these are hadith are talking about music and singing. And there's another ayah in Surah Al Isra. Allah says, وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ وَأَجْرِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْرِكَ وَرِجْلِكَ وَشَارِكُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ وَعِدْهُمْ وَمَا يَعْدُهُمْ الشَّيْطَانُ بِلَّا غُرُورًا Allah says, وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ So the shayateen, Allah says, وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ Allah tells them, before them, or misguide them or uh, make them involved in things which are uh, you know misguiding them and then taking them away from the truth Allah says what steps is man minhum before them or misguide them gradually those who you're able to so it's telling the shayateen and how are they going to do this with their voices or with your voices. So misguide them, befool them, deceive them with your voices. And attack them with cavalry, with, uh, with an army. So one of the ways the shayateen will attack the Muslims is by encouraging the non-Muslims to attack the Muslims. And one of the ways shayateen will encourage people to commit sins is by using their voice. And the way a person can use his voice to misguide the people is by singing and by music and by saying other haram things with his tongue and with his voice. And that includes singing and it includes music. Allah also talks about those who are <coughs> from Ibad rahman those who are from the servants of the Most Merciful. And he says those people, الَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ those people, they don't witness, they don't attend falsehood. They don't go to places where bad things are taking place. They avoid those places. And when they pass by things which are being said, when they pass by evil speech and evil talk, they pass by with honor and dignity. Meaning they don't sit and listen and get involved. They just walk past and they have this dignity about themselves and they don't get involved. And one of the scholars, he said that this zur, la yashhadun zur, they don't get involved in evil and, and falsehood and false talk. Uh, the scholars, they said, this is referring to music and singing. So all of these hadith, brothers and sisters, all of these ayat show us that music is something which is haram. Music is something which isn't permissible. And when we define music, it's defined as music is defined as using wind or stringed instruments. So if the if the if the origin is a wind or string instrument, that's considered to be a type of music. Now there's many a hadith which tell us about the permissibility of music and singing. <coughs> One of those a hadith is when the Messenger of Allah he said that there will appear some people in my Ummah towards the end of time 
who will think adultery and silk and alcohol and musical instruments are permissible. Meaning they're going to think it's okay to have relations outside of marriage. They're going to think it's okay to have to wear silk for men. They're going to think it's okay to drink alcohol. They're going to think it's okay to use musical instruments. And this is what's happening today, isn't it? It's one of the big signs where people are using it and they think it's fine. Nothing wrong with it. And also the messenger of Allah he said, soon there will be people from my ummah who will consume alcohol. Meaning there will be Muslims who will drink alcohol. And they will change its name. Meaning they won't say that it's alcohol, they'll call it something else. Do you think it's okay? It's not actually alcohol, it's something else. They'll give it different names. How many names does alcohol have today? Lots of names. Yeah? Champagne. Champagne is one. Do you think of another one? Vodka. Vodka. Yeah. Lech. <laughs> huh? Lech. Yeah, so many different names. Beer. Vodka. Gin. Tonic. Champagne, so many different names. They've got so many different names. Because they think, no, and then they try to make these bottles look very colourful and attractive. And then you have children, you know, kids, teenagers buying them. You know, so they have all these different names for all these different types of drinks. But it's still alcohol, it's still considered to be alcohol. So he said that they'll change its name. And on their heads, and this is amazing, he said, <coughs> there will be people from my ummah who will have alcohol and they'll change his name. And the second thing, on their heads will be instruments of music and singing. So this is from the miracles of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, telling us what's going to happen towards the end of time. People will have things on their heads which will play music and singing. What is this? It could be considered to be headphones today. People have headphones and they play music and singing with these instruments. And so then the Messenger of Allah said, he said, Allah will make the ground swallow these people up and turn them into monkeys and swine. So these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause them to not even exist. They will, they will be swallowed up, the earth will sink underneath them and they'll be swallowed up by the earth. And he'll change them into monkeys and pigs. He'll change them. They won't remain human beings. That's from the punishments of some of these people who will commit these types of sins. And another hadith also mentions, he says, والسلام, that there will be some people among my nation who will think fornication, having relations outside of marriage, boyfriends and girlfriends, Wearing of silk, drinking of alcohol, and stringed instruments as lawful. They'll think all of these things are allowed. And he mentioned in another hadith, he said that this ummah of mine will experience the swallowing up of the earth, of people, and metamorphosis of some into animals. Some people will change and they'll morph and they'll transform into animals. And some will be rained upon with stones from the sky. And they said, when will this be? And he said, when female singers and musical instruments appear. And alcohol will be common. And how many female singers are there today? So many. So many female singers. And music is something which is so common. It's so common, it's hard to avoid. If you go to a supermarket, there's music playing. If you go to a clothes department, a clothes store, there's music playing. If you go to another place, there's music playing. You walk down the street, there's music playing. So it's something that's common. Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said that the Messenger of Allah said, said when my ummah begin doing 15 things, they will be inflicted with trials. And one of those things he mentioned, when female singers and musical instruments become common. And this is a whole industry now, where the whole industry, the music industry, they look specifically at certain people. They look at certain people to become singers, to become people who will sing and there will be music, 
and then they'll pick them to basically put them on TV, on YouTube, and make them famous. And a lot of the time, they're women. There's always specific types of women. Women who are younger. How come it's not all women? It's always the younger women. Because no one's interested in the older women. No one wants to watch that. And there are always women who are dressed in a certain way. They're not covering themselves properly. Why is that? Because these things make people want to listen and want to watch. So it's a specific type of people and this shows us that these women and this whole industry is just people using these people to make more and more money. Abdullah ibn Umar, he was with his student called Nafi one day and they heard a shepherd playing a flute when they were travelling on horse. And so Ibn Umar, he put his hands on his ears and he started to walk away on his horse, started to ride away. And he's telling Nafi, can you still hear? And Nafi eventually told him, the sound stopped, he stopped playing the flute. And so he came back and he said, I saw the Messenger of Allah doing the same thing when he heard the flute of a shepherd. He would do the same thing. He would try his best to stay away from those things. And also Abdullah ibn Umar, he said, Verily Allah has forbidden alcohol, gambling, drum and guitar and every intoxicant is haram. And this is a hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmed and Surah Nabi Dawud. And there's not some other hadith, I have three or four or five other hadith that tell us the dangers of music. So, we said at the beginning, why are these things not allowed? What's the main reason? Because Allah has told us that these things are haram and impermissible. And that's why a person shouldn't do these things because if Allah has told us these things are bad, then there must be serious dangers and problems with this. Now, if a person does decide to listen to music after this, then that shows us he's disobeyed Allah. And the worst thing you can do is disobey Allah. Because even if your parents tell you to do something that's normally allowed, let's say your parents tell you, okay, stop playing FIFA. You don't have to play FIFA today. I don't want you playing on your Xbox or your PlayStation. Is playing on the Xbox or PlayStation, just doing that and playing games like FIFA, is that something which is haram? It's not something which is haram. It's okay to play those things as long as you don't miss prayer and miss other things. So if your parents tell you, don't play, What's more important, to play or to listen to your parents? To you have to listen to your parents. So yes. if you decide that you're going to carry on playing, have you disobeyed Allah? Yeah. No. You have disobeyed Allah because Allah tells us to obey your parents. And that's a bad thing to do. When you disobey your parents, it's a bad thing to do. And you're not even doing something bad. They tell you, don't go out and play football today. You're not allowed to play football today. We need you to stay inside. Okay, we're going to be busy and we can't keep an eye on you outside, so you're going to stay inside. So do something inside. And you sneak up and you play football. Playing football is nothing, nothing wrong with playing football. But because your parents told you, don't do it, then you shouldn't have done it, and you're sinful. So imagine if Allah told us not to do something and we do it, that shows us that we're sinful and it's, we're being disobedient, not just to our parents, but to Allah. That's even worse than being disobedient to your, to your parents. So, when a person starts to disobey Allah, then he starts to ignore the rulings of Allah. Meaning, it's like as if he doesn't care about what Allah tells him to do. So maybe if he doesn't listen, maybe if he stops uh, or starts listening to music even though Allah told him, what's stopping him from doing other things that Allah has told him not to do? He might start stealing. He might start doing other things. He's going to think to himself, it's okay, no problem. doesn't matter if Allah tells me not to do it. Maybe you start like, drinking alcohol. Excellent, you might start drinking alcohol, taking drugs. You might think to yourself, I'm not listening, I'm not, I'm listening to music and it's, it's okay, what's the problem? And then you're going to start thinking, I'll do some other stuff as well. And so you're going to end up doing all of these haram things. 
You might, you might get involved in betting and other things. So a person starts to do other things. Also, music scientists, they say it has an effect on a person's body. It affects, it affects a person's emotions. It's not just something that just you listen to and that's it. It affects your emotions. How can it affect your emotions? Who can tell me? Yeah. We keep on like listening to it. So sometimes you might be listening to music and you might feel certain emotions. What kind of emotions could you feel? Yeah. The words they like yeah, affect on your brain. Okay, so how could it make you feel? You might be happy or like or like the like the songs you listen and you might like start to get like repeating, repeating. Okay, so you might become happy when you hear certain songs. And other th other songs, you might hear them, and what might happen? Yeah. I think I can love music. Yeah, that's really bad. Like, you can get, like, sad. Excellent. Some music, it's slow music, maybe it's a violin or something else. And what's, what's the whole point of the music to make you feel? Sad, sad like TV shows. You sometimes on TV, okay, there's a show. And what do they do to make you feel sad? Play They'll play some sad music. Yeah. And then you feel sad. If there was no music, you wouldn't feel sad. Scary ones. Scary ones. Exactly. They'll play scary music, loud music, to make you feel scared. They'll play other music to make you feel happy. Oh, look, the, the boy or the girl are having fun and they're enjoying themselves. There's nice music and they're happy. And it makes you feel happy. So that shows us music can affect you. Emotions. It can make you happy, it can make you sad, it can make you scared, it can make you... Sometimes you might hear some music, you go to a gym and they play some music and what do you start doing? You start thinking, yeah, you know what? I'm going to start doing some exercise. I'm going to start doing some boxing. I'm going to start, you know, doing some martial arts. I'm going to start running or going jogging. So that shows us it doesn't just affect your head, it also affects your body as well. You start behaving differently. Like for example, people who go to nightclubs, okay, when there's certain music playing that's loud and very quick, what do people do in nightclubs? They stand in the center and they start dancing. And if the music is fast, they will move around really fast. They do all their, do all their moves. And if it's slow music, are they moving around fast now? No. Oh, it's a different type of music, so they, they'll start dancing differently. And all of a sudden, when the music stops, do they carry on dancing? No. They stop dancing. It's like as if there's a magic spell on them. When music starts to be played, they start dancing. And if, the, if there's a power cut, if something happens to the audio, if the sound system is messed up and the music is, music is cut, everyone stops dancing. They say, what happened? What happened to the music? Put the music back on. Even people in their cars, sometimes you can tell they're listening to music. They're not even standing up. How can you tell that they listen to music in the car? Yeah. Do you open the windows? No, the windows might be closed. But you can still tell they're listening. They do something. You can tell, yeah? They're looking bad. They're kind of like a bit... Oh, okay. But how do they dance, yeah? Like, make, making the sound louder. No, yeah. They're nodding their heads. Nodding their heads. They start nodding their heads in the car. And you can tell why he's listening to music. So even when you're sitting down, music can affect you. So don't you think that's a problem? Yeah. It's a problem because every time music comes on, it's going to affect you in your head. It's going to affect you in, with your body. And that's not something which is good. Because that means other things are controlling you. You're not in control of your own actions anymore. Other things are making you behave a different way. So, that's another problem with music. It affects your emotions. It makes you excited. And it has other psychological problems as well. It affects the brain. Scientists have proven that it affects the brain as well. The way your brain is wired. The things you think of. Also, it can lead to bad habits. Because sometimes music, what kind of words do they have in these songs sometimes? Yeah. Swear words. Swear words. And so you start saying swear words. You start thinking about bad things. You start talking about, you know, violence and killing people. And doing other bad things. Drinking and taking drugs and doing other kinds of things. So that shows us as well that these types of things aren't allowed. And also, 
a person might listen to some music and doesn't know that these singers are people who have very bad habits. They're involved in drugs, they're involved in crime, they're involved in drinking, they do all kinds of bad things. Yeah? You've heard of Justin Bieber. I've seen videos and photos of Justin Bieber looking from his roof at all the fans and he's spitting at them. I've seen this myself. And I've seen reports of people saying that in his coach, when he travels to different places to do songs, in those coaches he's taking drugs. He's taking marijuana and other drugs. And there was a famous singer called Britney Spears. And she was someone, once she was doing an interview, and all of a sudden she just starts to cry in the interview. And she, went, she started to have mental problems. Because you're always listening to music and doing music, and she ended up shaving all her hair off. And some of these people, in their songs, they have all kinds of strange words about worshipping the devil. There's a, singer called, there's a singer called Rihanna. And she has a song in the song, she says, I am a devil worshipper. And then you have another singer. His name was Prince. And he used to go around with the word slave on his face. And there was another song. And the song is called it's a swear word, F-U. That's the name of the song. And there was another song by someone. He was a rock star. And they would do all kinds of things. There was this man who was a rock star. His name was Ozzy Osbourne. And live on the concert when he would sing his rock songs, he would take a bat, a live bat animal, and he would bite it and cut and rip off its head on stage and people will stand there and they will start cheering because every anything that their favorite singer did is something which is is good for them they're happy they're like yeah he's the best like some people like i see some people like they're running and like we're jogging and they're like music to that is Exactly, because like we said, music makes you physical, you start to behave in a different way. That's not good because you should be in control, you should have self-control. So all of these things show us that these rock stars, these singers, they have evil habits, bad habits. There was another rock star, in his lyrics, he wrote, I'd kill my mother for rock and roll. His name was John Bon Jovi, a rock star. In his song, and people sing these songs all the time. There's a song called F.U. And it's actually a swear. And people sing this song. So this shows us that these people are filthy people. They're just saying these songs and you're just teaching people bad things and they're bad role models. They're not even, they don't, they don't care about you and about what you say. They just want to make sure you buy their, their songs. So, all of this shows us that listening to music is something which is bad. So how can we stop listening to music? One of the things that we can do, yeah? Uh, can to the Excellent. That was what I was just going to say. One of the first things that we can do is listen to the Quran instead. Every time you feel like listening to music, listen to Quran. Put Quran instead on your phone. Listen to Mashari Rashid or Sa'ad al Ghamdi or another reciter. Recite so many different reciters. Listen to a Quran instead. Because the scholars they say there is no heart that will have both music and Quran inside it. One of them is going to come out. So if you listen to lots of music, then the Quran is eventually going to leave. If you listen to lots of Quran, Music will eventually leave until you'll end up hating. You'll end up hating music. You won't even like it anymore. So listen to lots of Quran, because 
Another thing which shows us music is bad is that when a person listens to a song, he never forgets the lyrics. He always remembers them, even five years later, ten years later. And that's why the scholars, they will say the songs and the music is the Qur'an of the shaitan. It's the Qur'an of the shaitan. Because when a person hears the lyrics and the words of a song, he never forgets them. He remembers them for the rest of his life. So how many of us learn Qur'an and don't uh, learn music? And how many of us learn music and singing and don't learn the Qur'an? So, listen to lots of Qur'an. And try to be around people and places where there's not music playing. And if you happen to go to a place where there's music playing, try to avoid those places or try to leave as quickly as you can. If your favorite song is playing or something or a famous song is playing, just try to leave there quickly. And if you can't avoid it, then the best you can do is try not to listen to it. Don't try listening to it, try ignoring it, try focusing on something else, or recite some Qur'an instead for yourself. And also, if you're walking past a place and they're, listening, they're playing music, then you won't be sinful because you only heard the music, you weren't Singing. listening yourself. What's the difference between listening and hearing? Listening is when you're actually wanting to hear it and you're wanting to listen to all the words and you have the intention to listen. Hearing is just you're walking past somewhere and there's some music playing you just happen to hear it. You never intended to actually listen to it. Supermarket. Supermarkets. Sorry? Go to the yeah, like supermarkets, like other places. So you're not listening to it. If you start to listen, you think, hang on a minute, what sound is that? Let me listen. That's when it's going to be a problem. So inshallah, Try to listen to lots of Qur'an so that you're not going to end up listening to music and becoming addicted to music, inshallah. And inshallah we'll conclude here. If anybody has any questions, then I'll do my best to answer them, inshallah. Any questions? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, so Islamic songs are okay as long as there's no music in them. As long as there's no music in them, and as long as it's things which are beneficial, and they're talking about good things, okay, and they're called nasheeds, okay, then it's fine because it's talking about good things and positive things. What if, like, you go to, like, you know, I go to the 80s, yeah, and sometimes when I go to the reception, but there's always music on, like, so if you have to stay there and there's music playing, then like I said, try not to listen to it, even though you're hearing it, and try to recite some Qur'an instead. Just try to recite Qur'an. Recite Surah Fatiha, recite it in different ways, recite other surahs that you know, try your best to recite other things, yeah? Even you can, you can close your eyes. <laughs> yeah, you can, or you can have headphones and listen to something else. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. And you should tell your parents that they sh you shouldn't be listening to music and that you should be ex you should be taken out from those types of those types of plays. Yeah. Um, all types of music in the same school. Yeah, same same thing. If if you if you're listening to play music in your your classes, then try your best to get out of those classes and try not to get involved in those types of classes because it's against it's against Islam. Yeah. So if they're, if they're using music, okay, then it's not something which is permissible. Because as we said, and we mentioned those ayat, okay, they're using musical instruments. They're using wind or, uh, you know, string instruments, and that's not permissible. So it's not allowed. So it's like me, for example, stealing money and then giving it to poor people. Yeah, it's not allowed. You're not allowed to steal money. 
And then if you do steal money, you get into the police, haram money. You're sinful. So when a person is using music, that's something which is haram. Even if you try and do something good, it doesn't make sense. Because you're doing something haram to do something good, and you can't do that. Yeah? What about if you listen to Nashid, yeah? About, like, they're saying good thing about it. Yeah, the sheets. No, the sheets. I said I answered his question. The sheets are okay, as long as there's no music in them. The sheets are fine. Yeah. Normally um, in our in our school, every week we have to le we have to like sing in front of the whole school, um, like um, everyone, um, about about um this like musician, and me and my friends. They, we try our like we like we put our like hands in our ears and just pretend we're just saying something else. And when our teachers catch us, we just get in trouble for that. Yeah, you should tell your parents that you shouldn't be getting in trouble for this. Okay, and that is something which you're not allowed to do in Islam. Okay, so you shouldn't be you shouldn't have to be getting into trouble because it's not something which is allowed. Or you just pretend as if you're moving your lips. But it's not actually Okay, so the question the same, similar question to do with the Dean Squad. He said some children say that Dean Squad is okay to listen to and argue with the parents because of this. Yeah, so... Now, therefore, what, where do Dean Squad... No, because, again, it's the same thing, because they, you know, they have music in their videos. And music, like we said, okay, are musical instruments, and that's not permissible, it's not allowed. And also, some of the content that they have, there's women involved and they're not covering themselves appropriately and there's, you know, the relationships between the boys and the girls in these videos and it's not something which is appropriate, it's not something which is Islamic. Something, just saying something Islamic doesn't make it Islamic. Okay, it's about doing things in the Islamic way that makes something Islamic. And Allah is best. Islamic words, but they leave the same. thing, if, if they're changing, uh, you know, songs from the Western version to the Islamic version, but the music is still in, then that's something which isn't permissible. If it's songs which are like, I think they call it a cappella, which means that it's without the music. So there might be some songs, okay, where they change it into Islamic, they get rid of the music, and they keep the same kind of style of singing, and they have an Islamic style, then there's nothing that makes it haram now. Because the words are different, and it's not something which is you know, haram because there's no music, and it's something Islamic because they're saying Islamic things. Okay, but again, would I advise people to listen to these types of things? Personally, I don't listen to them, because what happens is you start thinking to yourself, where did these songs come from? What's the original? I want to hear the original song. I say you go back, so I listen to the Western songs instead. I listen to what those you know, non-Muslim women or men were singing in the first place. So always listen to Quran instead. Quran is the best thing you can listen to. And eventually, you, don't, you won't even want to listen to music. You'll be like, I don't want to listen to that stuff. It's just noise. This noisy stuff. You don't like it anymore. One more question, inshallah. Yeah? But then, if a person starts listening to music, but he's supposed to be listening to Quran, then obviously he's sinful in two ways, or three ways. First of all, he's listening to music, which is haram. He's disobeying his parents, and he's disobeying, even more importantly, disobeying Allah. So that's, and you're lying, you're deceiving your parents. Four things. So that's even worse. Okay, inshallah, we'll conclude here. Uh, I just wanted to uh, finally, final reminder just to tell and advise every single one of us that <coughs> because something is common doesn't mean it's okay and correct. So when we hear music and we hear these types of things happening uh, around us, bad things happening, it's actually something which the Prophet told us is going to happen. Meaning it's something which is going to be common. 
So just because it's common doesn't make it okay. In fact, a person should try his best to stay away and to avoid those things as, as much as they can. And we ask Allah to protect us from all types of evil and all types of uh, vices in this dunya. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and to increase your knowledge and to increase you in light and to reward you for your efforts and for your time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you with all that is good and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of those who attended and took time out. Zakum Allah khair inshaAllah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us meet upon good in this dunya and the akhirah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.